What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are going in depth with spring lipless crankbaits. We're talking about baits, some hook upgrades, all the different stuff you need, rods, line, all that good stuff. Let's go. Springtime is probably the best time to get out on the lake. It's my favorite time, you know, spring and fall really, but more spring, because that is your best chance of catching a big, big fish. Those pre-spawn females are moving up to the shallows. Uh, and what bait better to throw for them when they're moving up onto those long flats than a lipless crankbait. So today's video, we're talking about everything lipless crankbaits. I got all these baits laid out for you here. I don't know if you guys can see all this or not, but, uh, Lipless crankbaits, I mean, you can go down the rabbit hole. So today's video, gonna try and simplify it for you, depending on the type of fish you're going after, uh, depending on the type of fishery you have, and uh, we're gonna cover everything. So you can take little bits and pieces out of this video and apply it to your fishery, to your fishing, but spring lipless crankbaits. You know, <clears throat> lipless crankbaits, for me have produced more double digit bass than almost every other technique minus uh, big swim baits, glide baits, A rigs, uh, jigs too. But the lipless crankbait is in that category, that top five category for producing giant bites. It catches a lot of fish and it catches big fish. So like I said, gonna try and simplify this as much as possible because we have went down the rabbit hole. For instance, here are rods that are rigged in my boat today. I literally have four lipless cranks tied on because I have that much confidence in it. You know, it is, it's a, it's a bait that you can cover a lot of water and we're going to talk about all these why here shortly. Um, we'll simplify it. I'll give you my favorite one or two baits for you guys. And then we'll go down that rabbit hole. Like I said, you guys can pick the little nuggets out of it for, uh, and apply it to your fishing and your fishery. But uh, you can see, I literally pulled those out of my rod locker uh, for fishing Chickamauga. Springtime, the fish are coming shallow, right? They're gonna get in the backs of those bays. We kind of covered that in previous video where they're going. Um, and now is the time to pick off those big spring pre-spawn females and hopefully catch your new PB. So Lipus crankbait, like I said, top five techniques for producing giant bites for me. And uh, right off the bat, if I'm gonna simplify this as easy as possible for you, this bait right here, the LV500 in Ghost Minnow. This specific bait, got a little hook grade up there, upgrade on there for you, we'll go over that stuff, but this specific bait, LV500 for the hopping technique, if you are a lipless fisherman or a person that wants to get into a lip, throwing the lipless crank, this is both Matt and my number one bait multiple multiple big double digit bit of bass on this guy uh, it just catches fish no matter where you are in the country so everything that we are going to talk about on these lipless crankbaits kind of branches off of starting with that lv500 you know it's a three quarter ounce bait it's a little bit heavier than a lot of the baits in the category and that's what makes it special trying to plan for this video i knew it could be a long-winded video and I don't want it to be that way I want to simplify it for you so I'm gonna try and breeze through this stuff but just understand that it could be it could be a 45 minute or an hour seminar it, it, it really could be there's so many things to take in consideration rate of fall you know the weight of the bait the sound the action you know just just a lot of different things so LV 500 is our go-to bait, ghost minnow. That is a natural bait. It produ produces bites when other baits won't. Uh, I can't explain it except for it just works. So when I was planning for this video, I was, talk I was thinking about the different ways that I like to fish a lipless crankbait, and it really comes down to two different techniques. It comes, my favorite is the hopping technique. Fire this out there. Let it hit bottom, just raise your rod tip just enough to feel that bait flutter and then fall back down, almost like you're hopping a jig. The other technique is fired out there, 
burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 fish it like you would a square bill. You know, this really comes into play, like I said, when those fish are way back in shallow water, in the grass. But for me, the hopping technique has produced more giant bites. Fire it out there and just lift that rod tip just enough to fill that bait flutter and then fall back down. And that is why the LV500 shines because it is a three quarter ounce bait, it falls quicker. It, has, it kind of produces that reaction strike, that reaction bite on that fall. You know, some of the other baits that are lighter, ooh, sticky sharp hooks, that are lighter kind of tend to not, obviously they don't fall as quickly, but they tend to kind of spiral down. Sometimes they foul their hooks, but this three quarter ounce bait, flutter it, let it crash, Bam, you'll get some of the hardest bites, jig bites you've ever had on a lipless crankbait. They're eating that loud, hard bait like they would a jig. So that is why the LB500 is our number one. You know, we really like throwing that, that hopping technique. Uh, the other bait that we really like throwing, it's a 5 8 ounce bait, so a little bit lighter, but it's gonna be that Jackal TN70. You know, it comes in three different sizes, the TN60, and the TN50. So if you need to match the hatch, match your bait fish size, you can adjust uh, accordingly. But that TN70 is another winner. So this is our one-two punch. And I, I think Matt would agree. I didn't talk to him really about you know this video, but I'm gonna speak for him on this. LV500 and that Jackal TN70 are our one and two punches, no matter where we are in the country. And then we will branch out from that. We've literally had days where we'll absolutely smash them on the LV and can't get bit on any other lipless and vice versa. We've had days where we've just smashed on the, the TN70 and can't get bit on the LV500. The only thing that I can think that it is, that I, I believe that it is, is gonna be sound. Now, if you go looking in your favorite tackle shop or you go online to Tackle Warehouse, there's gonna be a ton of different lipless crankbaits and believe it or not we've probably fished i'm not going to say 100 percent of them but i'm going to say 90 percent of the lipless crankbaits on the market we have dug deep down that rabbit hole and played around with a ton of different baits and we're not even talking about blade baits that's a whole different category we're talking about just the lipless cranks so sound fall vibration it all adds up so lb500 tn70 lb500 TN70, just a little bit different pitch. And sometimes that's all it has to be, just changing it up. So if you're on a, on a boat or you're fishing with a buddy and you have a chance to fish both uh, at, at, at the same time, one day they will eat one and one day they will eat the other. No rhyme or reason, but definitely have both. Those guys right there, the LV500 and the TN70, if you're doing the hopping technique. So three quarter ounce bait, five eighths ounce bait. Those are the one and twos. Now let's talk about lipless cranks. Let's talk about why lipless cranks. You know, I mentioned it a little bit, but these fish are coming shallow. They're coming to you, right? The, the males, the bucks are moving up first. A lot of times these fish are gonna school up, right? If you can find the bait fish, you can find them near the spawning coves or bays, that is money. But these fish are gonna school up a lot of times those, almost all the time, those bucks are gonna be up there by themselves first, right? They move first. The females, the larger fish that you should be targeting can be a step behind, maybe a, a secondary point or two behind, or if it's a long tapering flat, maybe they're gonna be out there on the break, staging, waiting for the right weather, the right moon phase, the, white, the right water temp, okay? And then all of a sudden those fish will just move up that's where you can really put a hurtin' with these lipless cranks. Cover a lot of water, or really dissect with that hopping technique, really dissect those key areas where those fish are gonna stage. So we talked about where these fish are gonna be, why this works so well. That is the hopping technique. We, we've done so many videos on it. Uh, I don't wanna beat that horse, because we've done it. We'll link some of our favorite videos uh, down below in the video description. But the other technique, is gonna be the cast and wind, like I, like I demonstrated earlier. Um, here specifically on the TVA, the Tennessee River, the water fluctuates so much. Right now, 
It's probably come up about a foot in the last 24 hours, but before that it was down four or five feet. They pull it down, so the water changes all the time. So those fish go to the back, they pull out, uh, they're always moving as that water fluctuates. Same thing with reservoirs out on the west coast. You know, wintertime, springtime, until you get those storms coming, that water comes up, the water's always fluctuating. So I like to have two different weights per se in my lipless cranks. So if I'm fishing dirt shallow, you know, these fish are gonna make the rush to the bank. They're gonna tr get ready for the spawn. These fish can be in less than eight inches of water. They could be super shallow. Well, sometimes it's too shallow for that three quarter ounce bait. And that's where I need to go with a lighter bait. So that's why I have the different baits tied on. You know, this guy right here, I didn't talk about it, but that's the LV 150 half ounce bait. Quite a bit, quite a bit uh, smaller than the LV 500. But if I want to throw shallow and I don't necessarily want to throw that heavy bait, that's where I'm gonna kind of adjust my game plan. And that's where uh, kind of branch out in baits. You know, we got the rattle trap, the, the super spot, the red eye shad, uh, the six cents quake. So we have a handful of different baits for that technique. When they get super shallow and you want to either kind of do the hopping technique, but more that cast and kind of pump and, and uh, let's say rip out of the grass, that sort of stuff. Um, that's when I'm gonna go with these other baits. Let's start with the red eye shad. A lot larger bait, but a lighter bait. It's not as heavy as the LV500, quite a bit bigger. So if you're targeting bigger fish up shallow as these pre-spawn females move up shallow, this red eye shad, I'm gonna say specifically the one knocker, Again, it's all about sound, vibration, and fall. That one knocker is just different. That is a must have if you want that one knocker sound. Um, I talked about my favorite bait, hands down, LV500. Matt's favorite bait, up shallow, uh, he turned me on to it, is gonna be this guy right here. This is the Cotton Cordell super spot. Now, it is a fairly inexpensive bait in this category. You know, some of these baits are $8, some of them are $17, $18. It totally depends on the on the different bait, but this guy produces fish and it's I'm not going to say cheap cuz it's not a cheap bait, it's an inexpensive bait, but completely different sound, completely different weight. This is a really light bait. I believe this is a half ounce bait, but really really high pitchy sound uh, and you can fish it very very shallow same thing with the rattle trap I'm trying to hold this to the mic so you guys can, can hear it rattle trap super spot one knocker One day they will eat one, one day they will eat the other. It totally depends on the fish, the, the weather pattern, the water temps, all that stuff. And the last bait is gonna be the Six Cents Quake. Now I threw this in here. It comes pre-wigged, pre-wigged, pre-rigged with your EWG hooks. Uh, a lot of these other baits, I always change out my hooks. This is one of the few baits that actually comes with EWGs. Now you can see on here, they actually, put it on out of the box backwards. Real quick tip for you guys, when you're putting out, or you're changing your hooks, you always want that front hook forward. You want, when you hop in this bait or swim in this bait, you want those two other points running alongside the bait. And then on your rear hook, you want the two kind of flat, and you want that one right there sticking up to get them right in the roof of the mouth. Here's some that I've actually rigged. You can see what I mean about how that hook faces forward. And when it's swimming, it's gonna tuck in just like that. So six cents, make sure you guys are putting on your hooks right. But that is an awesome bait, comes in cool colors. That quake, a little bit more of a subtle sound. Again, here's that TN70.
So just, just different sounds. So two different techniques, the hopping, go with those heavier baits, go with that, that LV500, go with the TN70. Those are the two that really have stood out from all, from all the testing we've done, all the fishing we've done. We've literally tried, we've been in the middle of bites, just catching fish left and right, cutting off baits, just trying to see uh, which baits work and which baits don't. So we have confidence in these baits right here. So we talked about the hopping technique, the cast and wind, I kind of gave you my favorite four, really, if you will. Again, it's different sounds. They're fairly inexpensive. You know, the one knocker, go with that red eye shad. If you're going after fish that are eating bigger bait fish, go with that larger profile. Uh, and then either the cotton cordell, the rattle trap, or that Quake 70. That's the 70 size. Again, I will link all these products down below in the video description. Now that we talked about baits, let's talk about key hook, hook upgrades. Um, Cause that is really important. I'm literally, it's something I'm always do, doing on my baits. I'm always changing split rings. I'm always changing hooks. Um, it's just, when you get that bite, you want to have that fish stay pinned. So I talked about the quake, I talked about how it comes pre-rigged with EWG uh, hooks. Hopefully you guys can see that. Again, down below, there'll be a link. You can click on the pictures. But I break my hooks down into, <laughs> we're going down this rabbit hole, into three categories. Um, easiest, most common is going to be the Gamakatsu. You guys see that? EWG. Now, most of these baits like the LV has a number four in the front and a number six in the back. Some of them have four and four. The little guys, like the little LV 150, that's gonna be a six and a six. So you don't wanna oversize your hooks too much on these baits because it will overpower and really affect the actual action of the bait. And obviously the larger you go, the better chance you have of fouling. Um, I hate, making a bomber cast and go to do that first hop and my bait's fouled and I gotta reel it all the way back. It's spinning all the way along, just putting twists in the line and everything. So don't go too big on your hook upgrades. So number four, number six, or a number six and a six. On your bigger baits, you can go a little bit, a little bit larger. We're gonna talk about that guy here in just a sec but uh, really break it down into three categories. Number one, like I said, is gonna be that Gamakatsu EWG. Super sharp, caught lots of fish on this hook. Um, it is probably my, my number one go-to hook. The thing with the EWG, you know, this is gonna be e easy for a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys already know this, but EWG is gonna be tipped in hook points. So when that fish eats that bait, it's gonna, have uh, more of an angle on that hook point to keep those fish pinned. Now vice versa, if I am looking for, ooh, getting windy, sorry guys. If I am truly fishing around uh, giant fish, big fish, I'm talking five, eight, 10, 12 pounders, right? I'm fishing for big fish. That is when I go with this guy right here. This is the owner, ST56. This guy right here, this is a 3X hook. So a triple X, three times strong. It's gonna be a stronger wire. It's not gonna have nearly as much bend or flex than definitely the stock hooks, but then like the, uh, the Gamakatsu. So, show this to you right there, stop. Okay, Gami EWG, owner ST56, it's a 3X hook. Uh, you're not gonna bend that out. So fishing Clear Lake, fishing some of those big West Coast uh, bass producing lakes, that ST56 really became our bread and butter fishing for those, uh, those larger fish. With that said, this new owner ST45, it's a Zowire hook. That is quickly becoming one 
of my favorite hook upgrades, okay? It's a Zowire, wire, very strong. It's a 2X two, two plus, so it's not quite a 3X. Um, it doesn't really overpower the bait. It's got a different finish, but I've been really loving that hook. We throw a lot of that hook on our blade baits. If you guys have seen our blade bait videos, that is the hook that we use on there. But again, number six in the back, number four up front. Those are the three hooks that I throw. Uh, depending on if they're slashing at the bait, I'm gonna go with that round bin. I'm gonna go with that owner ST56. If they're really choking that bait, then I'm gonna switch out to those EWG, those, ho those hook points that are turned in just a little bit, uh, just helps to keep them pinned. But when those fish are, uh, you're hopping that bait and they're just slashing at it, that round bin has a better chance to hook in those fish uh, than the EWG. If you're fishing around wood or grass, you know, a lot of guys, springtime as the grass starts growing up, you're looking for those isolated grass patches. Those fish are gonna pull into that grass patch and you're gonna pop this bait out of it. The EWG hooks um, are more weedless. They don't get hung up as often. So that is another plus for those as well. Now the one other hook that I wanna share with you guys, it's a short shank. It's a, it's a, it, it's a, a hook by VMC. See that little blade on there? I have a lot of luck, a lot of success adding a little flash to my lipless crankbaits. You know, we've talked about when to use lipless and uh, versus blade baits in the past. We've done videos on that. A lot of that has to do with pressure, right? You're throwing baits that are loud, create a lot of ruckus. Now you're going to go more of a silent uh, just to fish behind people that are throwing a lipless. Uh, same thing with adding a little bit of flash to the hook. It's just a little bit def different presentation. It doesn't affect the fall of the bait or the, the vibration of the bait, bait, bait too much. Uh, it just slows it down just a little bit, but um, it doesn't have too much drag with that blade spinning. But on the fall, that blade is flashing. On the hop, that blade is flashing. And on that reel, that blade is spinning down there. Just add a little bit more flash to the bait and uh, it just helps those fish pick that bait out of the bunch if you're fishing around bait fish. So those are the three, four, if you will, hook up braids. Again, that's that VMC, that's that bladed treble. I'll link that down below in the video description. Play around with that one. But um, rods, I'm gonna talk about rods real quickly um, and then we'll wrap it up. But uh, you can go out and you can get an LB500 or you can go both ends of the spectrum, LB500 or you can go get that super spot and you can throw it on your favorite jig rod. If you're a budget fisherman, you got one combo like a, a medium heavy action uh, or power uh, with kind of a fast or medium action that will work. That will work. If you're a guy that wants to have designated lipless crankbait rods i got a i got a few for you for years and we've tried so many it's all about finding the right rod with uh, a soft enough tip i don't know if you guys can see this you don't want something that has too fast of a tip okay you want it to load deeper down the blank but you also want to have enough backbone to set those hooks right you want to keep them pegged now a lot of times when you're fishing a lipless crankbait they're gonna eat it they're gonna come up and jump you don't want that rod to unload too quickly so you want kind of a moderate moderate fast action okay. not sure why the camera just shut off but uh, you want that that load to load deeper in the rod to keep, like a like a crankbait rod right but you need to have a little bit faster tip when you're doing that hopping technique you don't want that thing to be a noodle to uh, just bend all the way down to the to the butt of the, the, the rod when you're hopping it, right? So the, C, uh, the IMX Pro, this is the 845 CBR. That has been our favorite lipless rod for the last few years. You know, we've tried so many different crankbait rods, so many different brands, and that one has really um, been our favorite. More recently, Loomis came out with their actual lipless rod. And this is a rod I've been playing around for the last two years. It's an 855 CBR. So it's just 
one inch longer is a seven one. That's a seven foot. It's just one inch longer, um, but it's that that's their designated lipless rod, and I love it. It's been been great. I've caught some big fish on it. You can see this guy right here. That's that LV five hundred. Uh, we're gonna talk about colors here in just a second, but uh, really those are my favorite lipless crank rods. Now, uh, throwing the little guys, you can get away. This is actually, this is a, a St. Croix, this is a victory. Uh, St. Croix always has a little bit slower actions on their rods, but this is a 7.2 medium heavy moderate. So you can get away with throwing the uh, smaller your smaller square bills, your smaller lipless cranks on this guy right here. As far as reels, seven to one, eight to one, it doesn't really matter, uh, but I do typically run braid to leader. Again, that braid, you're getting a lot more sensitivity than straight fluorocarbon, uh, but if you are on a fishery where you fit, believe those fish are line shy, uh, you're going with that more ghosty bait, you can go straight fluorocarbon, 12, 15, 17, uh, depending on what you're fishing around. But uh, typically, I'm throwing braid to leader. I can adjust my leader depending on, uh, like I said with the fluorocarbon, the size of fish and what I'm fishing around. Plus, I get that, uh, that bonus sensitivity. Okay, so I held those baits up, held those rods up, and totally brain farted colors on lipless cranks. All those baits I held up, you would notice a pattern. It's gonna be either bait fish with some flash, ghost, or craw, right? Three colors, that's it. So if the water is clear, I'm going ghost minnow all the way. Some kind of ghost, you know, some kind of bait fish, clearish color, okay? If I want a little bit of flash, right, I'm either adding that hook or I'm going with a bait that has a little bit of flash. That's American Shad. That is an awesome, awesome color. Probably my second favorite. Uh, it just has a little bit of uh, uh, flash to it with those scales on the bait. Again, TN70, a little bit of flash. And then I'm going craw, right? Your spring craws, some kind of red. I break it down really in two categories, bait fish and crawdads. That's it. Uh, you can go with, with some chartreuse baits if you get a late spring storm and it muddies up the water, but, but primarily I'm throwing one of those three colors. Um, can't believe I missed that earlier in the video, but that is, uh, just simplify it, right? Don't give yourself too many options. You've already branched out with the different baits. As far as colors, keep it simple. Ghost, flash, and craw, okay? What else? We talked about the different techniques. We got plenty of videos out there actually showing you how to catch fish. Uh, talked about the hook upgrades. The only upgrade, other upgrade that I do, I always uh, change out split rings. It's just a thing I do. You know, you never know. I'm sure some of these companies have good terminal tackle on them. I'm always changing out the hook, so it's just easy to change out the split rings as well. But um, you guys, spring lipless season is here. You know, these baits shine right now. Get out on the water, chuck and wind if you want. Find those schools of fish. Find where those fish are staging up. If you find that key area, really practice that hopping technique because a lot of times you will catch, from what I've witnessed, you will catch the bigger fish slowing down and doing that hopping technique. Again, it's just literally lifting that rod tip just enough to feel that bait flutter three or four times and then drop it down. You don't need to drop it on slack line, drop it on semi-tight line, semi-taut line, a uh, little bit of bow in there where you can feel uh, and watch your line because a lot of times you'll see that line just jump. But um, that is my favorite way to catch uh, to catch them this time of year, especially when they're moving up on those long uh, spawning flats. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the, the comment section. I will try to get to those and answer those as soon as possible. But um, lipless time is right now, spring fishing. As these water warm, the water temps warm, the water levels rise, those fish are pushing to the back 
and a lipless crankbait can be money right now. As always guys, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.